Hello friends, this is Vince Fahori Horn, and I'm here to share a bit about this upcoming Buddhist Geeks community podcast series called Our Beloved Teachers. Our Beloved Teachers is a new kind of podcast series aimed at exploring the true nature of the teacher-student relationship while also preserving the oral history of Buddhism, Buddhist Dharma in the digital era. This project was conceived of and is being executed by Buddhist geeks and is made possible with support from the Lens Foundation and Himera Foundation. This project began many years ago as I was just a fledgling practitioner myself getting into the Dharma. And it came out of the recognition that some of the most interesting and exciting things happening in the Dharma world are the stories that we have that were passed along to us, many about teachers that have long passed, but whose teachings continue to live on either through text or through human relationships. As a young practitioner, I remember reading The Life of Milarepa. I remember reading Jack Kornfield's Living Dharma and reading about one of the teachers in my own tradition, Deepama, a famous female yogi from Calcutta, India. And all of these stories were profoundly moving. They inspired me, even though many of them obviously were also hagiographies, stories of saints. They inspired me to deepen my practice and to consider that there was much more that was possible than I really realized. And I've seen that time and again for other practitioners, other people, that this is something that really inspires people to hear these stories that are passed along through our lineages, through our family traditions. It is not my podcast. This is not the Vince Horn Show. This is actually an open invitation for anyone who wants to record an episode for this series to do so. All you have to have are the interests and skills to do it. So I'll say more about that. But first, I want to explain how the series is being kicked off because I am kicking off the first few episodes to uh, get the ball rolling. And I want to talk a little bit more about what the series is and what you can expect from it. So to begin with, I'm going to be speaking with two of my beloved teachers, two people who are still alive, fortunately, Trudy Goodman and Kenneth Folk, two of my longest standing teachers, about their beloved teachers that, in this case, have passed away. And this is important to state. The series is focused on reflecting on the stories and experiences that we've actually had in our real lives with beloved teachers who have passed, who are departed. I think this is important because it allows us to speak more freely about our teachers. We don't have to deal with any of the kind of potential tensions that might come up from sharing intimately about someone while they're still alive. And also there's something that happens after our teacher has been gone. We've had time to reflect on their lives, to consider the impact of their teachings. So more space, more distance actually can lead to more clarity. So that's another reason for just focusing here on teachers who have passed away. Of course, many of us have beloved teachers who are still alive. And then as I said, this is also meant to serve as a kind of record, a record of our Dharma lineages and of the stories contained within them. So I'm beginning with Trudy Goodman, who's speaking about her first beloved teacher, the Venerable Sun Sanim, Korean Zen master. And also speaking with Kenneth Folk about his beloved teacher, Bill Hamilton, Theravada Insight Meditation teacher. As I said, this is a community podcast series. So the idea here is that anyone could submit an episode to a public database, an air table that we've set up. So if you know of a guest, a know of someone that you'd like to talk to, you have the skills to record and edit and share that recording then you're very free to do this. In fact, very encouraged to do this. The idea is to create a collective database that's decentralized, distributed among many hosts, recording about their beloved teachers. And although we as Buddhist geeks will only be able to share a certain amount of these in our own curated podcast feed, 
we have a setup a curated feed here for this series called Our Beloved Teachers. You can subscribe to it anywhere that you can get podcasts. And we'll also be sharing it directly through our main Buddhist Geeks podcast feed as well. But all of the episodes that you all share, all of them will be available through an Airtable database that anyone can search through easily. And so there's no restrictions on what can be submitted there unless they don't meet the basic requirements of being about a beloved teacher who's passed away. What we'll do as kind of the conveners of the series is to create our own curated feed, highlighting episodes we think are particularly awesome and that we love, sharing our own recordings, of course. But then really the uh, encouragement here is to do your own. The reason this is possible to do a sort of decentralized community podcast series is because we're taking advantage of what are called free cultural works. This is content that is shared openly using a Creative Commons style license that's very open and allows people to really do whatever they would like with the recordings that are shared. So people can take these recordings, they can remix them, they can share them however they like without permission. They can even include them in something that's being charged for in a commercial project, say like an online course or something. And so the idea here is to work with the idea of open source dharma, of taking the radical open generosity that we find in the Buddhist tradition, especially in the analog versions of the tradition, and to find a way to bring it into the digital era. So what would it look like to practice open source dharma in the digital era? This is one of the fundamental questions behind the series. And we're trying to find that out by encouraging people to be more open with these stories, with this content. There is one requirement when people submit an episode to the series, which is that in addition to being open in all these ways, it also needs to be cited with an attribution. So this is a Creative Commons 4.0 international by attribution licensing that we're setting up for this project. And that means that if someone does share the content that you create anywhere else, that they need to attribute where it came from. This is also part of the spirit of Dharma, right? We don't want to just rip each other off and act as if these stories are our own. No. They have an origin, they have a lineage. We're acknowledging and recognizing that lineage while offering these stories freely, our reflections freely, to what you could think of as a kind of wisdom commons, a commonly shared space of wise content, of wise material that can benefit all who come in contact with it, that isn't limited or restricted in any way, but rather is open for anyone to use. And our hope, our deepest hope with this project is that we can, in fact, encourage a movement of people to record these stories, to offer them freely into the commons, and that there can be a tremendous amount of creativity and sharing that happens around that content beyond what we, as Buddhist geeks, one organization, can do. So that means if we have a tremendous amount of content that's submitted in this database, that people could come through if they wanted and they could edit out little short, tiny snippets. And then they could share that through social media or they could create their own podcast feed sharing that. Or they could offer it as part of something they're already doing, some part of their livelihood. That these things would be available to be used in that way. And that this might lead to an entire ecology or ecosystem around these recordings that goes beyond what any one organization or one proprietary project could do by itself. So that's the spirit that the series is offered with. And if you want to find out more about the series, go to ourbelovedteachers.com. There you're going to be able to find the latest episodes in our curated feed, of which this is the first. And you'll also be able to submit your own episode, submit your own recordings to the database that I mentioned, the public Airtable. At that site, you'll also be able to find the Airtable. You can go to ourbelovedteachers.com. Now, I also want to, in this opening episode, I want to respond to some of the pushback and criticisms I'm anticipating from this project. And I, I'm doing this because I found that over the years of launching new projects and new podcast series, that there's always some amount of criticism. And some of that is totally fair. As a podcaster, I always learn 
about my own biases and hidden agendas and unconscious elements through receiving that feedback. So it's very welcome. Critiques are welcome. And I want to go ahead and get in front of the ones that I already know may be coming and that I think I have a response to. It's important to respond to these criticisms and to clarify some of the nuance up front. The first criticism I expect is kind of one coming from more of a scholarly perspective, which is to say that these recordings and these episodes will not be historically accurate. These stories and the preservation of them, let me be clear, is not meant to serve as an objective scholarly historical record, although I expect scholars may find it helpful. Rather, these stories are shared as kind of family stories. The expectation, the understanding is that people will be connected to the lineages that they're sharing from. The stories, recipes, and keepsakes that we pass along are all part of this. It's the sharing of a kind of intersubjective, interpersonal record of those people who found value in these lineages. It's preserving those precious stories from inside the family for future generations and to share them openly, to share them publicly. Another thing I want to respond to is a potential critique around the lack of diversity being shared through the series. And first, let's just say, I think that representation matters. It does matter how things are represented in a project. And there is a very real limitation with this project because we're focused on teachers who have passed away. Historically, this tradition and these teachers arise out of a patrifocal, patriarchal traditions. And this is very clear. It's undeniable from the history. And so what we're working with is a historical record, which during modern times has become increasingly more egalitarian, increasingly less gender stratified. But because we're limiting the series to teachers who have passed, we are also going back in time. It's like using the James Webb telescope to stare out into space. We're also looking back in time. And part of what we're going to see is that gender stratification, that patrifocal lens, because many of the teachers who've passed away are teachers who were living in the 20th century, many of whom in this series will likely be Asian teachers, many of whom will likely be men. And this simply reflects the lack of representation that was present at that time, not the representation that's present now. Now here, I think there is a great opportunity for us to open our net wide, both in terms of who's hosting these sessions, where your backgrounds are coming from, ideologically, ethnically, in terms of your traditions, etc. Please consider that when you are hosting, when you're selecting who you want to speak with when you're thinking about which beloved teachers you want to talk about. Because we can, through our own collective effort, actually rectify this in some way. Now that we got the potential critiques out of the way, a little bit of more information about the community podcast series and where this came from, how it came to be, how it's starting, I want to share a final call to action, which is, again, just to visit ourbelovedteachers.com to check out the website that we've set up, the beautiful art and imagery that was produced by artist Sylvia Bastos, and to see how you can host your own episode, your own recording, if you'd like to participate in the community aspect of this. Also like to encourage you to check out this new podcast feed we've set up to share the episodes we feel are most interesting and exciting here at Buddhist Geeks, which again, does not represent the full scope of what's possible. And you can do that by searching for Our Beloved Teachers in Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else that you listen to your podcasts. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to this opening episode of Our Beloved Teachers. I hope this ends up becoming a beautiful series that ends up contributing to our overall knowledge of the teachers who've come before us, of the stories, of the relationships that animate the Dharma. 
may it be so. After nearly a year in private beta, the Buddhist Geeks Network is now open for any independent practitioners who want to engage in interdependent practice. You can find out more about the Buddhist Geeks Network by visiting BuddhistGeeks.network. And if you'd like to join the community and join us in regular social meditation practice or other events that we host there in the network, all freely offered, you're very welcome to do so, again, by visiting BuddhistGeeks.network. Love to see you there.